We're at the Higgins Hill Beckwith single lane roundabout in Missoula, Montana. It's getting close to 8 a.m. So this would be some of the heaviest traffic experienced at this roundabout. It's September 13th, 2011. This roundabout has been in place for almost exactly two years. Large number of cars, bicyclists, fair amount of pedestrians, school buses, close to downtown Missoula, joining several neighborhoods. To our knowledge, there's been two very minor fender benders, no injuries in the two years of operation here. A typical stoplight in Missoula, of which there's about 65, has a couple to a few to several injury crashes a year. It fluctuates depending on traffic volumes and other roadway conditions. The majority opinion, so to speak, is that this roundabout is performing very well. There's some opinion, I would say minority, that this line right here in the morning coming north has to wait too long and you can see there is a queue much less probably wait time than if there was a stoplight there's a crossing guard down there right now letting some people over to the Paxson school there's an elementary school right here one block away from the roundabout Now that queue can flow a little better. There's no conflicting side street traffic. This intersection was supposed to be a stoplight. Our group, Missoula Institute for Sustainable Transportation, became heavily involved and asked why. Why a stoplight? Why not a roundabout? There was no roundabouts in Missoula at the time. Now there's four modern roundabouts. We were told that the church of which the property I'm standing on did not want a roundabout. And I asked why? And I went and spoke with the deacons. And one deacon had experienced a really large, fast rotary in New York when he was in college. And that was the picture in his mind of high speed, unsafe. I tried to explain modern roundabouts are much different. He wasn't so sure, to say it politely. A group of us went to the pastor, showed him photos, asked him to do some research, and he did, and liked what he saw. Saw civility, saw green, saw flow, saw safety in the modern roundabout examples from around this country that are sprouting up daily. So the church agreed to give up a parking space or two right here on this corner and that allowed the geometry of the roundabout to work and the roundabout to go in. At MIST, we feel like this roundabout is okay. It's not a bad roundabout. It's not terribly poorly designed. But we also feel like it could be much better. The angles of deflection allow a bit high of a speed on some of these legs. Right here, as this northbound queue comes, they could come in pretty quickly because of the angle of deflection allowing that speed. We feel that this diameter of 120 some feet, close to 130, that's curb to curb, could, should be around 104 feet and tighten up the geometry 
so speeds are a bit lower. The capacity would likely remain the same or even increase because with lower speeds you get more gaps and a greater resilience allowing pedestrians and bicyclists in slower modes to co-mingle with motor vehicles. Speed variability and limiting that is a key to any kind of efficiency and flow. Think of a highway. You get higher speeds and a little bit of braking can start backups that last for miles and miles and even hours. This cyclist, she's doing what we would say is the right thing by taking the lane and not hugging the curb. A cyclist hugging the curb risks a driver trying to get around them on purpose or not seeing them and right hooking or cutting them off. A cyclist hugging the curb risks an entering driver not seeing them because of the blind spot of the post between the windshield and driver door and pulling out into them. The cyclists, no cars are behind them, so maybe staying a little to the right, and especially because they're exiting, is okay. In general, when I cycle through this roundabout, I'm taking the middle of the lane and even just left of center. Pedestrians have the right of way. If they're at the crosswalk, the drivers must yield. It's also the responsibility of the pedestrian for their own safety to ensure that the drivers yield and not blindly walk out. That cyclist scooted around to the right, which they should really wait in line, just like the motor vehicles. If there's a long queue, is it okay for a cyclist to come up on the right to the beginning of the line? Perhaps. If they don't do anything unpredictable or cause a crash or even cause any kind of rage, respect is a key and we feel that roundabouts usher in respect among users much better than a stoplight, which tends to promote competition rather than the cooperation that's very prevalent at a single lane roundabout especially. We do not support multi-lane roundabouts at this time because that scale is more towards cars than it is humans. The single lane is very simple, easy, elegant, affordable, green. One lane makes it easy and safe. One lane can handle up to 30,000 cars a day or getting close to 3,000 cars an hour. If your traffic volumes are higher than that, Employ methods to reduce those volumes with bike lanes and bus service and trains and trails and car share and flex time and other ways to lessen the peak demand at rush hour. That's typically what planners and engineers build for. We have many deaths at stoplights each year around the country and even locally a couple, a few a year. Many severe injuries. Roundabouts keep traffic moving and save lives and save time and save gas and save $5,000 in electricity. This is a truck apron, the concrete part right there. It enables the roundabout footprint to stay relatively medium, small in size while allowing big tractor trailers to have their rear wheels go up and over the apron. The bike lane this is best practice, and we agree. You can see up ahead the bike lane tapers, dashes, and ends. And the cyclist either uses the sidewalk, dismounts, rides real slow, either or, depending on state law, or signals left, takes the lane, and goes through in the center of the lane. Two good options. 
most cyclists, because of the moderate to lower speeds, choose to use the circulating lane of the roundabout. So now there likely will not be any queues, so to speak, maybe until lunchtime a little bit and peak, peak rush hour in the evening. So this will have an excellent level of service, almost no delay, 95% of the day, maybe a higher percentage. That's one of the beauties of the roundabout. It can handle the peaks, but not be an excessively large intersection for the rest of the day. That helps with air quality. Granted, we all need to work to drive less, bike more, walk more, transit more, have fuel efficient vehicles, make sure the vehicles we have have good air pressure. There's hundreds if not thousands of little things we can do to make our transportation system more sustainable. We are very much in support of three lane roads, that's one lane in each direction with a center turn lane which then allows a single lane roundabout to be a design choice at the intersection. It's our strong hypothesis backed up by research that one lane in each direction, so it could be a two lane or a three lane if you have the center turning movement accounted for. Three lanes with single lane roundabouts moves traffic safer and better with a much a much higher livability feeling than five lanes and stoplights. Think of the enormous amount of money we can save in maintenance and land acquisition with a smaller footprint road network that meets our mobility needs. This is somewhat embodied in the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise moves slower, yet gets places faster. And studies in Golden, Colorado have shown that roundabouts lower the speed, but also lower travel time. Our website is strans.org. Email mist at strans.org. Phone. 406-880-6834. Our YouTube channel is Free Cycles Missoula. Let us know if you have thoughts or ideas to make communities more livable, transportation more sustainable.